recently because like everyone that I'm living with doesn't identify as queer or really like think Give it about much gender very much. I, I feel a little bit like sort of like I mean, it's like a little lonely. <laughs> like, it's hard to not have the the people around who you used to like be able to sort through a lot of these lot of questions that you have. And, like not have people to talk about that kind of stuff with, and like people to like affirm you or to you know to parse things out. Yeah, because it's so new. It's such new territory. It's not really about staking a grounding like gayness anymore. It's the playing field's opened up so much. It's about individual preference and like fluidity and like curating your own thing. I'm doing a portrait series about people who walk the gender line and play with gender in interesting ways that pushes the boundaries and takes what they want for themselves in terms of what would traditionally be considered male or female characteristics. There were certain people in my own life that inspired me to start documenting these beautiful new forms that I saw appearing. So all the first people that I painted are close friends of mine. And with each person, I get to know them and do not only a painting of them, but also a creative text. I wonder what that impulse is to like sort of rein in someone's gender to something more identifiable. Felix is a musician. He has his own solo project that his friends accompany and then he does the same with a lot of his friends' bands. I'm not even sure if he would necessarily be comfortable with the pronoun he, so I'll have to talk with him about that. Well, you were, you were saying that like a lot of people or that there are a lot of uh, different pronouns that people yeah. use other than the, like, masculine and feminine like binary pronouns and were, were you asking why specifically well i'm like, wondering like what's gonna stick you said you go by they and do you find that that's difficult for people to use and like what about z i i've been trying to name different ones i think that that tends to be more difficult for people yeah. to use the z structure like like they is definitely the they them and their pronouns can be confusing for people because of you know, English grammar, but honestly, people who complain to me about that just need to shut the fuck up and like, <laughs> deal with it. Like, like, they are doing this. Like, what are they up to? It's pretty simple. <laughs> it's already in their vocabulary to, yeah, to use it. When I specifically say that I would like to be referred to as they, they say, isn't that a plural? Or that doesn't make any grammatical sense and sort of throw this whole fit about that when that's really not the point. The point is that some people would like to be made to feel more comfortable not being referred to as some presumed gender that is already mapped onto them. So far, nobody's seen the portraits. I have about 13 of them now. So it's an ongoing project, but it still hasn't found any venue. These are actual tattoos. Uh -huh. And then this is something that he drew on his forehead. Just for that day? For that day, and always carries around a Wicked Witch of the West lunchbox. Uh -huh. He oh. moved from a small town in Texas recently where he yeah. was bullied a lot. And has now just like blossomed and loves life. Yeah, here. loves being in New York where he has the freedom to be who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think why people flock here. I'm the director of the Hofberger School of Painting in um, Baltimore, which is the Maryland Institute's graduate painting program. And I think a lot about what I can provide for younger artists now in relationship to what it's like to actually come to New York and try to survive in this environment, which is so utterly commercial. Especially if they've been in graduate school and they've had the opportunity to see how fast their work can grow in response to feedback, in response to exhibitions, in response to dialogue with their peers. I mean, I can see between Christmas and graduation, people will go through just entire transformation in their work. and bring it not so much that what they're doing changes, but their ability to articulate and bring their work to a much higher level can grow exponentially in graduate school. Then they hit the outside world and it's like, you know, a brick wall. It can be very frustrating when you realize that so many people are banging on the same gates to enter the art world. There seems to be a finite number of gatekeepers, and the amount of people banging on the doors to get through those gates is insane. Have you been to the Whitney yet? Mm, I'm going tomorrow. Do you want to come? Are you? 
And I, I, I have one extra ticket. I went. Oh, right. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. It was pretty much zero figurative painting. Mm. Zero, like, humanitarian issues. I don't know. It just was kind of like a soulless show. Really? Well, then. That's kind of what I've heard. The first year of Hofburger that I entered was Virginia's second year. And I'm not sure why, but it just turned out that the women were all representational painters and the men were all abstract conceptual thinkers. And because Virginia and I both came from this figurative painting background and had kind of felt like we fought against having to defend our stance on painting and why we were painting representationally, you know, just being in the world or having lived in New York before, it's uh, a little bit harder to paint representationally, at least in the art world of right now, of this moment. Um, so we really bonded on that level. I'm trying to think of what we want to do for the setup, too. Uh -huh. um, I mostly just want to get your face and hair. And I do feel like these portraits are documenting a moment that is so ripe right now and so important. And 10 years from now, it might be totally archaic, which would be awesome, actually. Yeah. And I also think that the paintings are important for the individuals. It, they're really beautiful portraits. I mean, just in, in a beautiful classical portrait sense, they're really lovely portraits. At some point, I'd like to have a show where the work is all up and from time to time, there's a performance in the space by one of the people that, whose portrait's up. Cool. Um, because everybody is, has like some incredible talent. Yeah. I met Lily in 2007 when we were studying abroad in Florence. We were a really good pair because she would come up with the crazy ideas and then I would figure out how to make them happen. It's pretty effective. We're like space snow angels. Yeah. And yeah, we've probably been getting dressed up in costumes since we were in Venice for Carnival. I was an elf and she was some some version of herself. Check that shit out. Tonight we are dressed for a winter solstice party and we're kind of snow creatures. Whoa. Oh yeah. Something a little tribal. Whoa. I saw some of the, the portraits online. online, which were beautiful by the way. Like <laughs> really, really nice. Someday your portrait will grow up. And it will be. <laughs> it will be. It's like an ugly duckling right now. It will blossom. We're kicking around the idea of putting on a show together, maybe with one other woman whose paintings also have a lot of similar threads. We can propose it to the dealers that we're already working with, or galleries that we've showed with in the past. Or we could just rent our own space and then have a couple of different events associated with it and just put on a show. Um, we don't always have to be knocking at the gatekeeper's doors. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. I when we were small. It's dark in this cave and you know You called me on the telephone and told me that last night grandma 